Now, Ekurleni Mayor Mzwandi Lemasina will officially close down the COVID-19 food bank situated at the Ekurleni Fresh Produce Market in Springs. Masina opened the facility after President Cyril Ramaphosa declared a nationwide lockdown to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Since its inception, the food bank has provided much-needed food relief to those in need. For more, we're now joined by the Executive Mayor uh, Masina. A very good morning to you, Mayor Masina. Thank you for talking to us this morning um what's what's what what's the latest with the food bank why is it being closed down well uh, thank you very much uh, we we really appreciate uh, this opportunity um as we have said on the 14th of april when we opened the food bank uh, that uh, we will try for the next three months just to make sure that we make a uh, provision uh, to the need within our communities uh, so today is the is the third of uh, July. Uh, we've gone past that uh, the three months that we had spoken about, and we've experienced a uh, donor fatigue over time. As you know, that uh, uh, different from others, we have been uh, making a call and a request generally from a uh, uh, business community to give us the support. To date, uh, we have about uh, 123 uh, businesses. Uh, that have come through uh, to donate uh, to the value of just over 10 million rand worth of food. And I must say that we really appreciate their contribution and um, it has reached over 32,721 uh, uh, parcels. Uh, all these in total, um, uh, they've uh, touched about 163,605 uh, 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 people across the city and we think that uh, this is a supplementary uh, program over and above what the provincial government under premier makura is doing has really assisted a great deal over the last three months executive mayor when that donor fatigue that you're talking about does it strengthen the case for the reopening of businesses well uh, I, I think it does in a way because um, you know people can contribute as and when they make money uh, but when they no longer making any income, I think it becomes difficult for them to come through. Uh, however, would also, obviously, as government has done, would want to make a special call that uh, all those that are opening uh, for business, they've got to take uh, extra precautionary measures that are being pronounced uh, by government uh, of social distancing, of ensuring that um, places of work are sanitized, uh, the social distancing, and all other things that government have spoken about. And I think that... Uh, uh, we've got to be extra cautious, and all of us have been doing that. You can imagine, uh, uh, we, over the past four months, we've been interacting with all manner of people across, including uh, the places that we have visited, uh, be it the, the informal settlements uh, uh, that we visited, the, the hostels, uh, and all other places that we, we really were, 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 were going to. So I think that uh, it, business should open, but they should be extra cautious and ensure that uh, uh, they continue to, to do the work they've been doing. So what's going to happen to uh, the sector of the community that you were providing food to? Wh where are they going to go to now? Look, uh, this was a supplementary program because you know that uh, it is the competence of the province uh, to provide food for the needy. Uh, so the province will continue to do that. I was looking at the statistics yesterday that uh, here in Negurulain alone, uh, the province distributed about 51,000 odd thousand um, uh, uh, food parcels. And I'm sure that uh, uh, we'll continue using that particular channel to ensure that uh, we continue servicing our people. Part of... Uh, so, 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 so the food bank is going to close down. That's, that's, uh, that's a done deal. Yes, yes, yes. No, we, we have made this undertaking when we started. Uh, we were joined by the Premier that uh, we think this was a relief uh, mechanism because uh, when we were on level five, uh, things were so dire that uh, people were, were, were asked to sit at home. They had no food and everything, so we had to intervene decisively. But over time, we've realized that um, you know there have been a lot of developments that have taken place in, in the country, including uh, the, the, the special grant that uh, was announced by national government of 350 per, per unemployed uh, uh, persons. And we think all those interventions, plus what the province is doing, should be sufficient, uh, su should be sufficient, uh, especially when industries are opening. Because many people, uh, you know, they, they, they do all sorts of activities to earn income. And we think that uh, the economy has been opening slowly. And, 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 and this role really 
uh, we will we, we'll have to to leave it to those that are dedicated to to continue with it um, throughout our conversation, you've been speaking about the needy, but another set of the community that uh, uh, this process sought to help was the homeless. And more and more, we're seeing them coming out on the streets when they were supposed to have been provided with shelter uh, and such services. What's the conversation at the moment about homeless people in South Africa in relation to COVID-19? Well, I think uh, the, the COVID has exposed us to, cur- to current realities that uh, we've got to make sure that uh, there is a thought and a provision for the homelessness. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of challenges that uh, we've witnessed. As you know, that we had about four homeless um, uh, uh, centers in our, in our space. Uh, you know, uh, we experience uh, good behavior, bad behavior. Uh, but I think that in the main um it's a conversation that the, the national government the provincial government and lo- local government must have to look into the plight of those people i must hasten to say that uh, we did not just look into those we went to child-headed household uh, we dealt with smmes that uh, their businesses were closed we we also supported uh, extensively the creative industry and uh, the vulnerable women we were facing a uh, gb uh, gender-based violence uh, all the hostels the 24 hostels that are here were provided with food, including all the uh, uh, old age homes and orphanages. Um, but we worked yeah. extensively with faith-based organization, amongst others. We have to wrap up our conversation, unfortunately, but just a quick one. Just the latest stats in terms of the conversation by the uh, Premier yesterday concerned about the surge of numbers in the Gauteng province. Uh, what's, what's a, how's Ekurelini looking like? Well, um, our numbers are just below 10,000 uh, and the recoveries are just below 3,000. And uh, we can uh, really urge our people to, uh, you know, many of us have said that one of the things that we need to do, when there is no need for us to go to work or to, to go out, let's stay at home. We can implement our own self-imposed uh, uh, level five to try and avert the situation. Because looking at these numbers, uh, just in South Africa alone yesterday, almost 8,000 new cases uh, this is unbearable i think that uh, we've got to contribute because government has been doing everything possible as the premier was saying uh, but we need a contribution from ourselves as citizens to avoid these uh, many funerals these house parties and all these things that have really uh, uh, seen the numbers searching in, in our spaces and and we really want to unfortunately appeal to we have to end it here visual. Thank you so much for talking to us, okay. the Executive Mayor of Ekuruleni, uh, Mayor Masina there. Let's say goodbye as well to our viewers.